trying to get a little bit of peace. Morning. Morning, how are we doing? Hope you're doing okay. Happy Tuesday. Hey, Max. So I've got two stories today. Um, they're not both about dogs. The first one is, they're both about choices. I think that's what the vlog is, it's choices today. The first one is where it's a choice that I will make or we will make. Whereas the second one is a choice that I didn't have and it was made for me. And both of them will set a path and a direction. Uh, the choice that I will make is very simple. It's, um, it's Max. Um, we decided we're not gonna keep him. And we decided last night we're not going to keep him. There was a lot of women in our end. We start off with, you're never going to keep the dog. That was always the plan. And then what happens is, is you get to know the character of the dog and if, you know, you get to love the dog and he's beautiful. And you know, you then see what the possibility is of trying to keep him. But uh, there's not a possibility of doing it. And the reason being more than anything else is, is most probably Rolo. Is Rolo's like two dogs in one anyway, because he's such a big lad and he's such a strong lad. And uh, I'll just put you down there for a sec. He's such a big lad and he's such a strong lad. And um, he's hard work. He's hard work when we take him out. You know, we've, we've took him for three years to take him out and take him to bars so he can sit and relax. And he's there and he's no problem. In the beginning he was, but now he's no problem. And then to bring an additional in, who's actually, he's very, very timid, but yesterday just typified it very, very quickly, is that um, this couple turned up with two Labradors, fully grown labs, big lab, big, big labs. And they weren't controlled. They were, they were just, they've lived on a farm in France and come over and they weren't controlled. And because they weren't controlled, they were barking at R2 and R2 was just barking back. And you know, it, it's just not a nice, it's not a nice environment that creates and that creates in, um, you know, for other people. I think I've got more concern for other people. And then I've just took them both out for a walk now. And you can see by the leads at the beginning of the film how much they were pulling. And, and to be honest with you, I'm 52 this month, and you've got another, you know, once all the, once all the hoo-ha dies down in about two, three weeks, you're stuck with the dog then for the next 10, 13 years, and uh, you've still got to do that, you know? My back, I don't think my back's going to be able to take it. Um, I think that's one of the first things, one of the main things about it, is that uh, I don't actually, I choose I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? I, I just choose that I don't want to do that. And I think that's, uh, I don't think it's a selfish choice. I think it's a decision. That's an important decision that you can make for yourself. I can very easily get steamrolled into keeping them both because they are phenomenal. They are absolute beauties. Uh, Max is a beauty, but I choose not to. The other thing was, um, if you just take a look at my arm now, this is, you, you saw on the film at the beginning, I got him playing a little bit. Rollo was playing with his leads and then he was playing with Max's lead. And you know, they're just playing, they're having a great time. They don't not scare me. But Rolo's nails are like rusty claws. And once he gets hold of you on your arm, there, you can see here all the, the marks that you get. And I don't mind it, because it's my dog, but if he does that to a 70-year-old woman while I'm trying to control Max, and as, you know, another woman comes over and says, hi, how are you, and I'm a dog lover, and he's done it before. And he's raped the arm and he's just, you know, the next thing you know, the, the thin skin, they're bleeding. It's, uh, it's another reason why I think we're not going to do it. I know, I think it's another reason why we shouldn't do it. I just think it's another reason. You know, we're just walking then everywhere you walk. Uh, I saw some kids on the walk. So because I saw kids on the walk, it's like, well, that dictates I can't walk there. Because, you know, you don't know what the actions of a kid's going to be. And he's just always second guessing, second guessing, second guessing. And I think that's the main reason why we're choosing on this instance that we're not gonna, we're not gonna keep him. He slept fine last night, we had a baby gate down last night and he slept fantastic. Um, he stayed downstairs, Rollo stayed upstairs. I came downstairs, he didn't damage anything. He's not toilet trained, the house was clean. I took him out for 15 minutes, uh, nothing, came back in and then he gave me a nice message on the outside terrace uh, that needed cleaning up. Um, so he's not toilet trained either and it's like, can I be bothered to go through all that again, you know? And I know there's people that will be who want to be. So rumour has it he's off to Italy and we'll just wait and see what happens. There's a little bit of rain in the air today. And you know, we pray for a little bit of rain because that rain will help put the fire out because the fire's still going, uh, which is a bit weird. But uh, the first one about choices, and that's this one, is that uh, I think we're choosing not to, not to have them, not to keep them. 
It's sad, I know, but I think I, I think we've made the right decision. I really do. The second story is a story that happened about six, seven years ago, and it was a story of choice, and it was through no choice of my own. And it dictated a life path through me, where for me, where I just didn't have a chance. I genuinely just did not have a chance. And it was, uh, it's a really, it's an interesting story. It's an incredulous story, uh, but it's, it's a true story as well. And it's bizarre. I was head of business for car dealerships, and I was being sent around the regions, around the region, looking after struggling sites and making them, uh, putting the structure in, and making them better, and making them uh, put the processes in place so they worked. I was, quite, I was still enjoying it, and uh, I was doing successful, uh, successfully actually. And I went back to one of my old dealerships, so I knew everybody in there. And um, I was going back to it because we were getting rid of the general manager and they were putting me in. And um, I'd been in about a week and a half, and you know, you get to feel everyone knows you. You get to feel the staff, and the staff were telling me how much they, uh, you know, weren't happy with the people higher management. I was all right, obviously, because they knew me, but higher management they didn't like, etc. And you know they're all a bit negative so it's a tough ship to turn around but it's one i was prepared to give it a go um i was very friendly with the service leader uh, the service leader was a good uh, was yeah i knew him i knew him very very well and um i've been there a couple of weeks and then one sunday um i'm on my day off and i get a phone call from head office security saying that one of the cameras have been covered with a, a coat they've been covered in the workshops I mean, that's a bit weird. So somebody breaking in, covering a camera, stealing something. So I, I've been, I was in the pub and I was on my bike. So I just got on the bike and cycled to the place. And uh, I peered through the windows like that and I couldn't see nothing. I could see nothing. I could see something covering, but I could see nothing in there. Everything was silent, everything was fine. It was all locked up. I actually didn't have keys to the business then. So I thought I'll just sort it out the following day. So I called the head office, said, look, it's all fine. Following day, I'll check. So I went on the security cameras the following day and um, in the morning, I got there for about eight o'clock in the morning, got the security cameras up and went through it to see it. And uh, I actually saw what had happened was actually the service leader himself had uh, come to the dealership on the Sunday. And he'd, uh, he'd gone into the dealership and he covered, he'd covered the camera for some reason. So I knew it was. So I called my uh, regional manager and explained, look, this is the story. What do I do? And he said, bring him into the office, sit him down, explain to him, what you've seen and see what he says. So I did, I brought him in, sat him down and I told him what had happened. And I just saw this man just collapse in front of me, literally just like a sack of spuds just fall down. And what's happened was it turned out that he was, um, he was having an affair and uh, he, brought his, uh, he brought his mistress to the dealership and covered the cameras and he uh, thought he'd got away with it and the problem was is that everybody knew him in the area everybody knew him in the business everybody knew his missus everybody knew that they were trying for ivf everybody knew you know they all thought they were solid and etc and it was me that had found it and i went back to my regional manager just having a bit of a play Rolo wants to play and he doesn't I think so I went back to my regional manager and explained the story to him and he went back he went higher up and it turns out for theft and breach of security is instant uh, dismissal so they came back to me this on the uh, on the Friday evening and told me that I'm gonna have to dismiss him instantly on the Monday and nobody knew nobody knew what's gone on nobody nothing etc now he was going away on a trip on the monday morning till the friday he was going away on holiday um so i had to um get hold of him on the sunday because he's in the area so i met him i met him at a pub on a sunday and i explained to him the whole story and i said so i said look i'm gonna have to instantly dismiss you i said if that happens people ask why etc and you know your whole story is going to come out so your only other option you've got is you resign with immediate effect. I says, go away on your holiday, have a think about it, and let me know what the crack is. So he went away on the Monday, on the Friday he comes back, and then we meet again on the Saturday, and he says, look, I'll just, I'll just instantly resign. I'll tell the people, um, I'll tell all my staff, 
that the people higher up in office are just, uh, it's becoming insufferable to work for, the pressure, the tension, etc. And I'm just gonna resign with immediate effect. And at the time I went, right, okay, no problem. So in essence, we saved a marriage, saved, etc. So anyway, what happens is, that Monday morning, they start, the workshops start early, they start at like seven. We Sales don't normally tend to get there to about half eight. So I've walked in to a letter of resignation on my desk and with service managers nowhere to be seen. And the whole service department in disarray. And he'd gone, he'd gone. But you can imagine now the service department now who, you've not won them over in the first place. You've got no chance of winning them over in the second place. They were absolutely hating, hating higher management, hating the company, hating what was going on. And uh, sticking behind the service manager, like to the death, because they loved him, you know. And you know, can you believe he's trying for IVF and he's, this has happened? And it's like, oh my God. And that was a choice that was absolutely through no, nothing, no fault of my own, a choice that had to be made and a choice that got made. And needless to say, um, that dealership failed. I failed at that dealership because I couldn't win the service department around. Uh, one of the biggest people shouting was um, eventually after about three months, she, wasn't, she wouldn't stop shouting. I had to bring her into the office and in confidence tell her exactly what had happened because um, she, was the, what, she was one of the biggest terrorists in the business, let's say. And once she heard and what heard what happened, she got on board a little bit, but it was too late, it was gone. But it's through no choice of your own. The, the, the service leader left and he um, he actually took one of the best techs with him. They set up a business about four miles away uh, from the dealership and they are absolutely doing fantastic and flying. And I still see them now. Needless to say, if I've got an issue with the car, have a guess where I send my car, because he owes me big time. He owes me big time. Right, there's, uh, there's another dog walking around here. These two have had enough in here, enough play. The curiosity of dogs. Has it ever happened to you? Through no choice of your own. Hola, buenas. Through no choice of your own, has it ever happened to you that you've had to make a decision? That it'll affect your life? Because it affected mine. Because the failure of it was part of the reason then that the bullying came along. And... Uh, it was all completely out of your hands, but there you go. Uh, listen, have a great day. It's not, a, it's not supposed to be a down one, it's just a story. It's just a story now. And uh, I've got to get these dogs back for the breakfast. And mine. I'll see you later. All the best, guys.